Jim Harbaugh was up at the University of Michigan. He did well in class and got involved in the football program. He did so well, in fact, the Chicago Bears made him their number one draft choice a year ago. He began his career at a typical entry-level position, third-string quarterback. But strange things happen in the real world. The Bears have been winning all season, but along the way, first-string quarterback Jim McMahon has gone out with a knee injury. And last week, Mike Tomczak went down with a shoulder separation. So tonight, Jim Harbaugh will get his big chance to show what he's got as he starts as quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Well, it's a tremendous opportunity. You know, I you hate to see anybody go down, but, uh, you know, I, uh, I've, I've worked hard, and, uh, and I just want to contribute to the team. And uh, right now, all I can really think of is just being focused on the, the Rams and preparing, doing what I have to do, uh, you know, to help out the team. The Chicago Bears, with the best record in the NFL, meet the Los Angeles Rams tonight on ABC's Monday Night Football. Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim, California on a beautiful Southern California night. A sellout crowd tonight for the Chicago Bears and the Los Angeles Rams. Two old NFL rivals with much on the line for both teams tonight. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford. We're happy you're with us for this final game of Week 14 of the NFL season. The Bears have an 11-2 record for one reason and one reason only, and that's the play of their defensive team. And it's kind of marvelous when you stop to think about it that gone are names like Fensick and Gale and William Perry, Richard Dent, Otis Wilson, and Wilbur Marshall. And I think the guy in the middle that we'll look at tonight, Mike Singletary, deserves an awful lot of credit. He may be the MVP in the National Football League because the Bears have allowed the fewest points. Now the Bears, as good a pair of tackles as you'll find in the league in McMichael and Hampton, Sean Smith is the man replacing Dent. And then the linebackers. Last year, Marshall and Wilson on the outside. This year, it's Rivera and Morrissey on the outside, but Singletary in the middle. Mike Richardson has been benched as a starter tonight. So the Bears, incredibly, only allowing 78 yards a game rushing. And I think we just have an excellent matchup tonight of strength on strength. The running offense and the running defense of these two teams. Three tight ends in for the Rams. They send McGee in motion to pave the way for Bell, and he has the first down. Greg Bell out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. L.A. with its second consecutive first down. For the last eight years since this guy was a rookie out of Baylor, he's been right there in the middle for the Bears. And I mentioned at the top of the show, this guy is clearly the glue that holds everything together for Chicago defensively. The finest middle linebacker in the game of football, Mike Singletary. Al Harris, of course, a former linebacker. He has a lot of speed. He has the size for a defensive lineman. But he can really move, and you saw it as he busted inside of Slater a moment ago. This time on third and two, they go with four wide receivers. The quick pass to the 39 is caught by Pete Holahan. First things first, though, Rams have the ball, as they've had since the opening kickoff. Bell to the outside and gets wrapped up by Singletary. Mike Singletary had him by the ankle, and he downs him back at the 43-yard line. And you talk about play anticipation. Watch Mike Singletary even start to move before the snap of the football. Just works to the outside. Irv Panky really has no chance at all of trying to keep Mike out of the backfield. And the one thing John Robinson told us last night, Frank, is we have to avoid negative yardage. And they got it right here. What a quick read. He asked me if he liked Monday Night Football. He said, yeah, I get a chance to look at more films during the day. Hmm. Second and 14. They bring Charles White in, and Robinson said he'd use White tonight on second down in passing situations. And this is one of those, but blitzing through comes McMichael. Steve McMichael, I use the term blitzing. He's not a linebacker, of course, but when you see somebody coming like that and getting that free, you think initially it's a linebacker. It's the defensive tackle, McMichael. Well, it's clearly a case. Watch Steve McMichael loop to the outside here. The blitz is coming up the middle, and the Rams are going to turn him loose. They're not even going to attempt to block McMichael. It's a case where they just have to turn someone loose, and I think they expected McMichael to take a much bigger looping charge to the outside. Instead, he fools him and goes straight to the quarterback. And Jim Everett last night told us that they were at times going to turn the defensive tackles loose. Vince Tobin right there, the defensive coordinator. He took over for Buddy Ryan, and you can't knock the result. Third and 22. Everett rolling, had time for the moment. Receivers are covered, and down he goes again. Dan Hampton after McMichael picked up sack number 10 and a half. Hampton picks up sack number 8 and a half. And how many times we have seen it 
Rams with a good drive going, used about five minutes, first down inside the 40-yard line, two consecutive sacks. They're punting from their own territory. It's Jim Harbaugh, the surprise number one pick last year out of the University of Michigan. Everybody was shocked when the Bears went for Harbaugh, who thought he'd be picked in the second round by Green Bay. Neil Anderson closing in on the 1,000 yards with Suey in the backfield, McKinnon and Gentry of the wideout, Thornton, the rookie tight end, and Johnson and Stewart of the safety. Neil Anderson threads his way to the 31-yard line for a gain of five. It'll be second, third, and five with Larry Kelm and Kevin Green in on the stop. And there's Anderson, who is 87 yards away from the 1,000-yard mark. Again, the Rams shifting on defense on third and eight. A quick out to McKinnon, and he's tackled at the 42-yard line. He is brought down by Leroy Irvin. Gentry in motion. The fake to Anderson, and Harbaugh's going to keep it. Has the first down at the 50-yard line. Harbaugh, well, of course, had the option to throw that ball. He also had... Probably a personal option, knowing he only had the three yards to pick up. He knew right where the first down was. Put the head down, barrel for the first down. Here they are again. Jeter, the only lineman in the game. They rush five on third and ten from the shotgun. And Harbaugh escapes and with some nifty running comes close to a first down. But I think he's just short. They'll spot it at the 41. He's tackled by Brett Farinez. And as you can see on the far side, he's short by less than a yard. But boy, this is nothing but pure athleticism here on the part of Harbaugh. A straight shot coming at him, and somehow he gets it close enough to make it exciting. I like it. They're going to go for it, too. Well, it's, kind of, it's kind of backfiring for the Rams. Their quickness lineup isn't getting to the quarterback. Fourth and a short yard from the 41-yard line, and Harbaugh burrows his way for a first down to the 39. Second and six. Everett caught at the 29-yard line by Aaron Cox, the rookie from Arizona State who's ridden out of bounds by Betsy Jackson. First down. Everett is four for four. Rolling right, he's five for five, hits hole ahead. First down, and out of bounds he goes at the 15-yard line. Bumped out by Singletary. Mike Lansford, a 25-yard field goal attempt. Holahan holding and spotted at the 15, and Lansford's kick is good. Chicago with the ball. Third and 12 from the 33-yard line. And Harbaugh dumps it for Anderson. And Anderson scoots out to the 42, but he's well short of the first down. He is stopped by Gary Jeter, and the Bears will punt for the first time tonight. First and 10, Chicago from the 25-yard line. Sanders and Muster are the running backs, and here's Sanders. Up to the 25-yard line, he is stopped by Carl Eckern, and only 90 yards total offense for the two teams in the game so far. Big hole for Sanders, who exploits it, and has a first down moving to the 36-yard line, and the block was laid by Jim Colbert to spring him. Here it is again, Sanders working to the left, straight zone blocking, nobody pulling, boards out in front of it, huge opening, and uh, when you would think with the men deployed on the line of scrimmage, you wouldn't get that opening. Sanders, his third consecutive carry, takes it to the 38-yard line for a pickup of two. Second down and eight. Frank, it's, it's, it's not Southern Cal either, what a I'm, shock, I'm still thinking. <laughs> On second and eight, it's lost it for Muster. And a first down. Oh, there goes a flag. Six and a flag. That's a late hit by a mile. Ron Morris in motion. And Harbaugh steps up, hits Muster, and he gets to the 44-yard line. It'll be third down and a short three. Carl Ecker in the linebacker and Fred Strickland converge on the tackle. There's Dorsen right up in the line again from the 13-yard line. This drive begins with Bell wrapped up by Singletary. A four-yard loss. What a remarkable man, not only the leader spiritually, but he knows what's happening out there at all the time. Look at these eyes, that total focus. And right behind the pulling guard and right in the face of Bell. Not against that defense. Second and 10. And they run a reverse. 
McKinnon to the outside into Rams territory and with some great open field movement takes it to the 43 yard line stopped by Eckern that's why he's such a good punt return man because that basically was a turned into a picket line for him and McKinnon who is a one of the best in the league at returning punts got behind the picket line turned it into a big gainer with most people would have been stopped behind the line of scrimmage first and 15 Rams on top six nothing 320 to play in the half Chicago at the LA 47 Harbaugh hits Anderson. He's out of bounds at the 38-yard line, a run out of bounds by Jerry Gray, and they were about seven yards shy of a first down. Make it six. Second down and six from the 38-yard line. McKinnon in motion. Cross to Anderson. First down, takes it to the 30-yard line, and the way was led by Matt Suey in his ninth year, and how many times has he led the way for Bear running backs? Most often, of course, Walter Payton. A lot of versatility with all these bear backs. You bring in Sanders, he's a good receiver. Matt Sui, a fine blocker there in his ninth year out of Penn State. You learn a lot of things under Joe Paterno, and one of them is how to block in 190 receptions at Stanford. They do a lot of things. From the 30, Harbaugh starts to stumble, but hands the ball off to Sanders. He takes it to the 25-yard line. It'll be second down at about five, and that should take us down to the two-minute warning, 2.15 on the clock at the moment. And over the middle, a first down as the catch is made by James Thornton, the rookie who played his college football right up the road at Cal State Fullerton, and he takes a timeout. Shotgun third and 20. They send Gentry in motion. They send five receivers into the pattern, but keep it on the ground, and Neil Anderson, as Hilgenberg snapped it to Anderson. That's a play that several teams have worked to perfection recently including Houston but not here for Chicago 39 yard attempt coming up for Butler Brian Wagner the punter to hold and the kick is good frankly Vesty Jackson right here if you, if you wanted to be nitpicky about it probably should have brought oh, it out of the end zone and tried to run it back for a touchdown granted it's a hundred yard stroll but it's only one second remaining yeah it's it's uh, it's a play that really is a is a no lose and see how open Frank he is? called it this guy is wide open he almost should have fair caught it <laughs> he Vesty Jackson that's his, what that's number seven this year and Jim Everett for the Rams they don't want to get him pounded they want him to get rid of the ball early throw it away if he has to and Harbaugh making his first stop they haven't given him a whole lot of things to do they just like to run and control it if they can from the 29 Harbaugh protected well lost it over the middle to Thornton who breaks the tackle and another and gets the first down Oh, look at the arms by Eckerd. <laughs> Got it, Dan. Look at the arms on that dude. <laughs> well, yeah. Ask, let's ask Jerry Gray about uh, James Thornton's arms. I think Jerry Gray is the corner that comes up and tries to, to put a pretty good shot on Thornton and is rejected. There's Jerry Gray, number 20. Let's see if we can get a shot of it here. Just a safe, conservative dump off underneath. Here's Gray, and look at that Ooh. perfect form. He's got the hat right in the middle, the arms out, and he gets trampled for all his efforts about what you're doing all right Franken on first down the Rams from the 25 yard line and Everett goes for Ellers and hits him for a first down up at the 43 yard line tackle made by Vesty Jackson the following the game second down and 10 and Greg Bell takes it to the 47 of Chicago and close to a first down in this current age a team like the Rams going 3200 yards is number one Bell spinning and takes it to the 40 and of course the Rams through the years especially under Robinson synonymous with the running game and that's why some of those numbers are so low when you look at a, a franchise like the Rams where 3,200 yards puts you in number one it's, it's kind of staggering third down and three and the pass is intercepted by Dave Dewerson and he brings it back to the 50 yard line a well thrown ball here by Everett let's there's Douglas and he does. Look how he gets his right hand and actually pulls it back out of the hands of Damone Johnson. Boy, give Maurice Douglas all the credit in the world. He flips it right to Dave Dewerson. Sensational defensive play. And us, what are you doing in here? They don't call him Iron Mike for nothing. <laughs> From the 15-yard line, 
Everett throws complete to the 28-yard line to Henry Ellard for a 13-yard pickup and a first down. <laughs> first down from the 29. Maybe that's what was confusing. <laughs> right. Bell. <laughs> they it up to the 35. And a lot of bears on the line of scrimmage. Too many. <laughs> a lot in the backfield. Bell runs into three of them firsthand. Dan Hanson, Al Harris leading the charge. Third and ten from the 29-yard line. At the 40-yard line, has the first down. They needed 10. He gets 11. He ran to the 40, makes the catch, picks up the first down by half a yard. How about Doug Plank? He's the guy that used to come over and really put it to you. Second and 10. Here's Bell for a gain of six to the 46-yard line, setting up third and four. Doug Smith, of course, Pro Bowl center also. Third and three. Off balance, Everett throws to the 45, complete for a first down. Third and five, Rams send Ellard in motion. Everett under pressure, stepping up, chased from behind, gets to the 33, should have a first down. Tackled by Troy Johnson, but enough for a first. At the 32-yard line, it's McGee in motion. And Everett throws an interception into the hands of Morrissey at the 20, and back to the 33-yard line. By far his worst pass of the night, and it comes late in the third quarter after the Rams have been given a big break with Harris offside. We saw an easy interception in the first quarter, and I mean at the end of the first half by Vesty Jackson, but this one was even easier for Jim Morrissey, just thrown right to him. Second and eight, Bell needs one more yard for a thousand. They take it to him here, and then a flag is thrown as McKee makes the catch. And is bumped out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Penalty mark. Second and eight. Everett for Ellard, who's out in front. And touchdown. And as much as anything, Dan, they've confused him. Second and ten from the 11-yard line. Harbaugh takes off. And gains four, and the tackle is made by Mike Wilcher. Third and five out of the shotgun. They keep it on the ground. Anderson has the first down and a lot more. And run out of bounds at the 31-yard line by James Washington, the rookie out of UCLA. And they've got to make this happen. They've got to move some people out of the way and give Neil Anderson. Look how Gary Jeter just gets rooted out of there by Mark Bortz. And Neil Anderson, well, no one had to tell him where to go. That's a big plus when you've got a group in front of you like that if you're running the ball for the Bears. 16-yard game, ball at the 32, first and 10. Half a minute to play, third quarter. Harbaugh for Musser, who makes the catch at the 50-yard line, takes it to the Ram 49, tackled by Larry Kelm. They're trying to work him into the offense more and more, gradually. Brad Muster. Of course, it's easier to talk about that with those sort of things than it is to do. Second and nine with under 13 minutes to play. Everett hits Ellard. Look out. 35 to the 40. Into Chicago territory. All the way to the 30-yard line. Maurice Douglas chases him down. 49-yard game. At the 33-yard line, Cox in motion, Bell through the middle, Bell inside the 20, inside the 10, Bell out of bounds inside the one-yard line. And into the tuba. Maurice Douglas catches up with him, Irv Pankey through the block that sprung him. Second and goal. Bell again, dives to the touchdown. <laughs> On the scoreboard, rather, by a three-point total. And they're down 20 to three, and this is Bell. And he would have had a lot more had he not stumbled. He picks up six. 
San Francisco plays New Orleans in San Francisco on Sunday. And Charles White picks up the first down as he takes it out to the 45-yard line on the third and three, stopped by Singletary. This guy might be the MVP in the National Conference this year. Granted, a lot of great players, but you're going to have to go someplace to find a guy who's meant more to his team than Mike Singletary has meant to the, law, to the uh, Chicago Bears. Rather, This guy is the Chicago Bears. Right now he is at the 44-yard line. Everett lost it to Holohan. First down and 20 more as he takes it to the 35 of Chicago. The Rams have a good shot. We could, we could see these guys again. At the 36-yard line, Bell to the 29. There's one thing is mathematically certain. If they do face each other in the playoffs, it would have to be in Chicago. The There's Otis Wilson to the left of Jim McMahon. And a lot of talent for the Bears, not out on the field. William Perry nursing a broken forearm. Richard Dent, who broke a leg and a bone in his leg last week in their loss, in I their win, a, rather. I think a key win, Sean Gale, too. Sean Gale. Even though they got a good performance tonight out of Maurice Douglas. Frank, you and I were there at that game down in Dallas when they lost Otis Wilson during the preseason. Third down and three as Everett throws. Holahan has the first down and takes it to the nine-yard line. And the Rams have taken the clock from ten and a half minutes down to three and a half minutes, and they have a first and goal. <laughs> Lansford to attempt the field goal with Holahan holding. And the kick is good, a 22-yard field goal. Under Lindy and Fonte, they're capable of beating the Vikings. Another one of those northern cities. Here's Anderson taking an inside handoff out of the shotgun to the 37-yard line. Packers beat the Vikings, what we're talking about. Packers won 30-34-14 over Minnesota. And the Bears lost to Minnesota 31-7 at Soldier Field Week 3. Muster. How about big grab? That's a pretty fancy stepping there. When you see the skill level he shows out here, it's no wonder why. Second and 10. There he goes again. And Harbaugh, and it's McKinnon making the catch at the 21-yard line. And that'll look good on the stat sheet if nothing else. And I have to think that Keith Van Horn is hurt. When I watch how he's trying to block Kevin Green, I get the impression that here's a guy that's really sucking it up and trying to play. But good concentration on the football here by Dennis McKinnon. First and 10 from the 21-yard line. Harbaugh takes it down to the 13 with 30 seconds remaining in the game. Huh. Right, I don't think they'll let that go. No, they can't. <laughs> they have to throw the flag. And the pass is picked off. Picked off by Johnny Johnson in the end zone. And the Rams win a game they had to win. A wink from McMahon. And again, that'll be the speculation this week in Chicago. Will he or won't he play? And the smiling countenance of Jim Everett. Rams win it by a score of 23 to 3.